And so now I'm going to ask Gabriel Saya, my fantastic colleague in New York, to come up and give this award to Lorenzo. Um, this is great. I, Steph and I actually met each other in the global justice movement before I think either of us were in the global or we're in drug policy, so it's kind of wonderful to be here. Uh, before I go on, I want to say two quick things. One is that there's an anniversary being celebrated here, 18 years of marriage by Joyce Rivera and Bart Majur, who met at a DPA conference and are now here on their 18th anniversary. And what's very interesting is that we have some folks from New York, Lisa and Brian, who were recently married, and this is their honeymoon. And so Lisa and Brian, would you all stand up? They're medical marijuana patients from New York. Joyce and Bart have been doing harm reduction work for years. They met at DPA conferences, so if people aren't getting married, they're probably getting action, and that's still good, so have fun. Listen, Ethan said before that I could take a little bit to give a biographical background, so I'm gonna take you up on that, Ethan. Lorenzo Jones uh, is the person I get to give this award to, and this is really remarkable, not just for me, but I think for all of us, because Lorenzo's ex uh, history with awards is essentially to decline taking them. In Connecticut, some, I'm not kidding, in Connecticut some years ago, as an example, when Lorenzo was doing drug policy reform work year in, year out, at a time when drug policy reform was not on the mainstream radar, when it was not being a part of the mainstream conversation, when there was no Department of Justice saying, we recognize that there is a drug war, when they were doing that work on the ground in Connecticut, when everyone told them they couldn't do it, he was doing that work. And when larger organizations that had denied even acknowledging that that work was important, finally started to see that work get traction, and they wanted to give him an award, a major civil rights organization wanted to give him an award to sort of show that they too supported drug policy reform, he declined it. And he did that out of principle, and that is a very, very good example of Lorenzo. He operates out of principle, and in a way that teaches us all quite a bit. Born in Chicago, Chicago raised, uh, Lorenzo's been an organizer for 25 years. Uh, He's done work on healthcare access, on police accountability, on bread and butter issues like access to having stop signs and sidewalks in neighborhoods that cities essentially forgot or denied or simply ignored. Lorenzo did that organizing. He was also, before doing drug policy reform, an organizer for the drug war. He was doing all that McGruff the crime dog shit. And, <laughs> and that was bad for us. But by the time Lorenzo came on to do drug policy reform, something shifted and it was radical and amazing. This is not somebody who does his organizing lightly. This is somebody who goes to war. And so in Connecticut, over the last 10, 13, 10, 12, 13 years, we have seen the single most impressive array of drug policy reforms and sentencing reforms in the country. And I was thinking, how do I explain this to all of you? I was like, I don't actually know. I mean, syringe exchange, overdose, sentencing reform, medical marijuana, decrim, five governor overriding governor vetoes, five of them. I mean, on and on and on. And it sort of makes you feel like this, like when you think about Lorenzo's work. I'm not kidding. It's like you can't keep up with the guy. It's really true. But Lorenzo, in addition to his, all of his successes, he's, been a, he's a philosopher. He's a brilliant strategist. He's a tactician. And for me, very importantly, as a friend, he is a mentor to me. There's, I, I can tell you this, I would not be at DPA if it was not for Lorenzo. And I think there's a number of people in this field who would not be here but for Lorenzo. And this field itself has been transformed because of his work. And most of us may not know that or see that because he doesn't go on trying to get accolades for it. He's not doing it for those accolades. He does it because this is a calling. And in his work, he shows us how to pursue our callings in a way that can not just transform society, but transform ourselves. And so I am deeply honored and privileged to be able to have us stand and, and honor Lorenzo Jones for his years of activism and organizing for transforming the drug policy reform movement into the movement that it is today. I thank you. I love I love you back. I, I promised Ethan I wouldn't do Biggie Smalls. <laughs> so um, I'm, Gabriel took all my time, so I'm going to be brief and say I want to say I want to acknowledge a couple of folks who are really three people who are here, 
And I had this whole other thing about DPA's great and Ethan's great, and they kind of look and identify talent in communities, and they nurture that talent. And Ethan's kind of Brady Bunch, kind of all, we're all family approach. So I said that, right? <laughs> but I would like really briefly for Robert, Larice, and Charlene, and Sarah to stand up. Really, really, really quickly, Robert Rooks, who a lot of us know already, is who brought me into drug policy reform. I brought Robert into organizing. We had a big argument. We didn't speak for five years. One day, he shows up in my office out of the blue and says, I got this job. Help. I met a better way. Right? Thank you, Robert. Larice is my right hand in Connecticut. You guys know her. <laughs> Sarah Diamond's our board member. Sarah actually was part of the leadership team that ran the campaign to overturn the governor's veto of Ban the Box. And finally, Charlene, can you stand up? Stand up, please. Charlene St. Clair, no, stay standing. Charlene St. Clair is a master organizer. I was a drug dealer in the Asylum Hill neighborhood. Charlene had her organizer call me, do a one-on-one -on -one with me, and that's who brought me into organizing. I had never organized before that. And so, thank you, Charlene. And thank you, Ethan. Thank you, guys.